All right, this first question is going out to the entire team here, uh, and it deals with um, Alexander. So Brad Cora, Alexander says he plans on buying a new home in 2024 as interest rates appear to be coming down, and they do appear to be coming down. He's wondering what are the first-time home buyer mistakes to avoid when buying a home? Interesting thought. First time home buyer mistakes from inspections and then from uh, attorney as well. Let Brad, let's start it with you. Well, don't waive the inspection. Don't mm-hmm. waive the inspection. Just, you know, even if you are not going to get any repairs covered, at least know what you're getting into. Don't jeopardize your financial future by taking out someone else's problems. Uh, that being said, when you're choosing the inspector, make sure that you look at their sample reports, check their reviews get referrals uh, from people who you know, like, and trust uh, before you make that final decision, because that will make sure that you are provided with a report that actually makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is, is just read the entirety of of the report. There's a lot of information that's contained within. I know sometimes it can feel like overload, but all home inspectors should be partnering up with the buyer, first-time home buyer in particular, and guiding them through that process through a well-crafted and well-documented um, inspection. Uh, we, you know, home team works well with with all of the agents who you know come alongside those first-time home buyers, uh, walking you through. You need a home inspector who is professional, non-alarmist, doesn't try to you know create you know big uh, scary stories about things because you know we believe that everything can be fixed. I get that. Okay. It can be for the most part. Right. Cora, from your standpoint, uh, from a legal side, what uh, would you advise Alexander on this? Absolutely. Well, for a first time home buyer and any home buyer, you want to make sure that you're getting good title to the property. So what does that mean? I think you need to choose a closing attorney very carefully, one that has an outstanding reputation, professionalism, uh, legal diligence, and a trusted resource. So I would look at how many years they've been in the business. If it's a relatively new company, I would be you know, concerned. Is this just a pop-up company? Is this something where if I have trouble two, three, four years from now, when I go back to call them, are they going to still be in business. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, just understanding and appreciating and asking the right questions such as, has the title been cleared? Am I getting this free and clear? Am I getting a general warranty deed, which is the standard in our industry? But you know, if you don't have the right professionals and you do a different deed called a quick claim deed, suddenly you're taking it subject to. Also, making sure that you get your owner's title insurance policy, which is separate and distinct from a lender. A lender will always have their own lender's title insurance policy to ensure the loan that they are taking out for you. Uh, But the owner needs to protect what is probably going to be the largest investment that they will ever make in their life, and that is their home. And they do that. They protect their legal interest and investment in that property by getting an owner's title insurance premium so that in the future, should something happen, someone threaten um, their legal interest in the property, whether it be by you know post-closing fraud, which we've talked about, which is uh, certainly on the rise, or if it's it's a, an issue from the past. Maybe that title wasn't clear. Maybe a company did go out of business or didn't do a good job. And uh, maybe the public records, maybe there was a forgery um, or other type of fraud back in the chain of title. They're going to be protected by that title insurance premium that is a one-time cost. Also being sure that uh, the person that sits with you, yes, they're going to say sign here probably more than once or a dozen times, maybe even a hundred, depending on the type of loan that you're getting, but making sure you're getting an important short summary of those documents, especially relative to your loan product, such as when am I making my first payment? Are there any prepayment penalties on my loan? Mm -hmm. All those are going to be very important questions to make sure that exactly what you bargained for, exactly what you anticipate is in fact what you're walking away with after the closing. Yep. Good answers from both of you. And I also would add from a realtor standpoint is to start looking for your home well before you're ready to buy. You want to find an agent that you trust, a team preferably, which will give you the advantage of being able to get into a new listing quickly and then start seeing what's coming on the market so you can start determining whether this fits you or not and what prices are in the given area. So those are probably the best tips I think we could all give you to start your journey early, but know that it will be exciting and spectacular. Once you're in it, you'll think, why didn't I do this years ago? So we thank you. We wish you the best, Alexander, on this. Moving on, this goes to uh, our home team inspector, Brad Lawler. Uh, Richard writes in to um, 
Bob at WeSellLouisville.com, which you all can do. Uh, I'm on a tight budget this winter. How dangerous is it to run a space heater in my home uh, instead of running the heat throughout the entire house? Brad, what are your concerns on that? Well, depending on the type of space heater, um, you know, electric space heater is, you know, going to crank that uh, electric bill up quite a bit. Uh, but I mean, they, I think they can safely be used in, you know, single rooms. Uh, I would feel better about an electric heater, uh, particularly the oil filled ones than I would about anything that burns kerosene or any other type of, mm. of fuel, uh, because those have to be ventilated. They can't be used in a, in a room, uh, you know, anytime you're, bringing something like that and you're you know running a risk of carbon monoxide poisoning and it's not it's it's not worth it trying to save a few dollars on an energy bill which we all understand but uh electric you're probably safer than um it, than you are with a with a fuel burning one but w one thing i would say any heaters you're going to use make sure that you move them away from all combustibles don't keep them close to a bed you know your sheets your blankets can catch on fire don't put them near drapes don't have them anywhere that a child can tip them over or an animal can tip them over um you know you you got to be very careful with those space heaters infrared heaters go into under the category of electric heaters because they yes. plug in the yeah. yeah well i mean there are infrared that are that are also uh gas burning fuel burning mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. but yeah you there are a lot of the ones that look like little um funnels, cones, uh, those are going to be electric, um, infrared. A reminder, you can see a replay of this show by going to louisvilleanswers.com, louisvilleanswers.com. That will take you to our YouTube channel where you'll not only hear, but see us doing the show as we uh, recorded it for air. And a reminder, if you'd like to find out what sellers are saying about us, a couple of things, our Socola team, you can go to louisvillesellerstalk.com. We have videos waiting for you there or read our reviews at louisvillezillow.com or louisvillegoogle.com. 